And good evening and welcome in to high school football from uh, Vincent, Alabama. Tonight, the Vincent Yellow Jackets uh, coming off a win over Winterboro last week, 19-6. Uh, to six. Take on the B.B. Uh, Comer Tigers. B.B. Comer losing to Wadley 34-6 to six last Friday night in the season opener for both teams. I'm Jividale Abrams. We appreciate you being with us tonight. It is a hot evening uh, in Vincent, Alabama, and Vincent has been waiting and waiting for two years to get B.B. Comer back on their field. And you might remember a couple of years ago, B.B. Uh, Comer was behind almost the entire game and won right at the end. And then last year, B.B. Comer shuts out Vincent 36 to nothing. And uh, so it's been a tough couple of years for the Vincent Yellow Jackets. And they look forward to this game tonight uh, against B.B. Comer. This is a Sarah Automotive High School game of the week on uh, TV 47 WOIL television. Uh, brought to you tonight in part by uh, State Representative uh, District 33 Ben Robbins, also Donahue Physical Therapy, uh, Bailey Heating and Air, and Toyota of Silicaga, Marble City Pharmacy, Silicaga Parks and Rec, Omnia, Heritage uh, South Federal Credit Union, Community Funeral Home, Lori Darlings, Earlene's Florist with our first downs tonight, and Stop and Shop Auto Sales along with our national anthem provided by Silicaga Glass. And uh, we are getting ready to go as we've got high school football brought to you tonight by Curtis and Son Funeral Home and by Bandits Bar and Grill. So a lot of uh, high school football around the area, and we'll try to keep you up to date on some of these games as we work through the evening. As I said, it is a hot night uh, in uh, Alabama, but it's going to be a lot better as we uh, get into early next week. This is a Labor Day weekend, of course, and uh, it promises to be hot. A slight chance of showers. It's uh, uh, 91 degrees right now, and we had a high of uh, 96, and it, it feels like 98 with the uh, uh, heat index. So uh, get set for high school football. We're glad that you're with us tonight. Maybe you're just sitting up and enjoying it in the comfort of your home or some other uh, apparatus you're using to watch our high school game of the week. Hey, we appreciate all of you, including Rick Morris. Uh, Rick is uh, building a, a brand new facility uh, down in East Alabama, and uh, it's a big warehouse. He's in the logistics business, trucking business, and he's building a big warehouse, going to employ a number of people, and we appreciate Rick being a part of the broadcast as well tonight. Coach Adam Fawcett. Uh, he joined us on the Coach's Corner just uh, yesterday, as a matter of fact. And he talked about B.B. Uh, Comer's loss to Wadley, what it meant, and looking ahead to tonight's game with Vincent. Here's Coach Adam Fawcett. Marble City Pharmacy sponsoring the Coach Adam Fawcett Show for 2024. And uh, last uh, week, a zero week, uh, Wadley comes to town. Preseason ranked in the top five in Class 1A. And, Coach, they showed exactly why. They put a thumping on B.B. Comer. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, they uh, they came in and, and meant business from the start. And, um, you know, a little bit of a back and forth game in the first quarter, uh, first half, really. Uh, I think it was 15-6 at halftime, uh, and then second half they pulled away, and uh, our our youth definitely showed in, in the spots where we're young. And you talked about that early on. You had to re replace your entire offensive line. Yeah, you know, due, due to injury, um, coming in, I, I, we knew we were going to have to replace four out of five, uh, and then due to an injury, we had to replace five out of five. So. Um, had had to, you know, you had five guys in, in critical positions that had never started a varsity game, um, much less a varsity game together all as one. So uh, that, that makes it tough. Um, you know, I thought uh, some of those young guys played decent overall considering the circumstances, uh, but uh, obviously not good enough. 
defensively, uh, you know, Wadley's got a, a, a fantastic running attack, and uh, they uh, they wreaked havoc on on BB Comer's defensive front and secondary. Yeah, defensively, we didn't tackle well at all. Um, delays in, in getting lined up, and and Wadley gave us some stuff that we hadn't um, hadn't. Mm -hmm. seen in previous film, which we, you know, the previous film we had was from the year before. Uh, but yeah, they, they did some things that were really good and um, you can't, can't take away from them either. Like the, the wishbone is what they do and uh, they're solid at it. Uh, their guys up front did a good job uh, blowing us off the ball and getting double teams and, and things like that. So, uh, and just as we're young on the offensive line, we're young on the defensive line. So uh, we have guys, you know, um, Dylan Davenport's a, a big kid for us that's never seen varsity <laughs> reps and he's um, it showed yeah and he's you know he's a freshman so um, but it, it's one of those things where again we just you know we, we got two choices we can sit here and pout about it or we can we can get better and, and work to get better and um, you know obviously <clears throat> my I, I'm built to to suck it up and get better and um, that's the that's the goal for our guys as well you're in your seventh year at B.B. Comer, and when you came here, uh, you began a re rebuilding process. Uh, and I mentioned it on the, on the broadcast Friday night, that may be what we're looking at now, a second rebuild. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, the, the mass exodus last year of, of 12 seniors, um, and, and the truth of the matter that we had a ton of talent over the mm -hmm. past three years, you know. So um, when, when you're a 2A school and you produce um, two Division One athletes and a Division Two athlete off the same graduating year, uh, and you graduate four out of five offensive linemen. Uh, that's a big loss. Mm -hmm. So, um, depending on that, that's like wherever you know somebody out there works. That's like them coming in and uh, on Thursday in the middle of the week, and there's you know half of their work staff is brand new, and they're running around asking everybody what to do. So. Um, you know, even though those guys, and even though those guys got like JV rips last year and, and things like that, some of them have played, but some of them haven't. Um, but the ones that have played, even, even a, a JV rep and a varsity rep is so different. You know, uh, a high school rep and a college rep is, is so different just in the speed of the game and uh, things like that. So, um, you know, as we progress, you know, that, that feeling is gone and out of the way. We've got to move forward and get ready for the next one. 32 to six loss uh, to Wadley. What did you take away positives from the game? Uh, we saw some guys that, that were able to do some things that, that were good. Um, we saw, you know, uh, through even through like the, the offensive line stuff and the defensive line stuff, I thought Ja'Cory Borden played well in the defensive line uh, as a young sophomore for us. Uh, Tylen Parrish played decent for us on the offensive line uh, and did some good things and, um, from a, a skill set, uh, we still have skilled guys that can that can do some things and, and make some things happen. And um, you know, for us to be able to to be productive in that, we've got to get those skilled guys in space and get them the ball. And uh, you know, Sims, uh, he had a lot of playing time last year, and you've got him playing several different positions. He's a key to the success of this Tiger team too. Yeah, no doubt. You know, he he's kind of. Um, he, he's the guy that, uh, that can uh, make some things happen for you. He's a guy that can do some things that, that, uh, that are special. Uh, you know, his, he's got to uh, continue to develop from the mental aspect and, and understand, um, understand the help around him, you know, and understand, uh, you know, what, what, he's, what he's working with and, and to help build those guys up. Um, because at the end of the night, hey, we're all we're all striving for the same thing. Well, one thing for sure, a team that you're visiting Friday night just across the river, they're not going to feel sorry for you, the Vincent Yellow Jackets. <laughs> no, no doubt, they um, you know they're going to be ready to play. Um, they they're going to remember uh, the last time we were over there and, and how close of a game that was, and uh, you know they led all the way, they led the whole game except for like the last 40 seconds. So. Uh, th they'll remember that, and they'll, they'll have that. You know, I'm sure they've got that posted somewhere in their in their. And they'll remember room. last year the whipping that right. they carried back from here too. Yeah, 
Yeah, they'll, they'll definitely remember all of that. So they're coming off a win last Friday and uh, they're feeling good about, uh, about how they're playing and feeling good about their team. So, uh, you know, for us, we've, we've just got to go in and, and handle business. And it's really, uh, in being youthful, it's about compartmentalizing the game. You know, it's about, um, you know, the first drive. It's about the first quarter and then you get to the second quarter and then you, you know, you put the half together. So um, we, we can't really like big picture and look at all four quarters at once. Um, we've got to got to slow down and, and look. Hey, let's you know let's win the first drive. Let's go down and score. Or let's get a stop, and then go score and mm-hmm. and uh, things like that. So, but the big key with with teenagers and in, in general, whether it be a sport or or in life, the big key is adversity and and handling adversity. And um, teenagers aren't real real good at that right now. And uh, I think that that's the issue and that's that's the hard part is. It's how do we handle the adversities of things, and um, how do we grow from those things? <laughs> how 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 do fans coming off uh, a semifinal mm-hmm. berth last year and a final berth the year before that? I mean, we're an impatient bunch now. We're used to winning, and here we are. What's going on over here now? Yeah, I, you know, I think that the big thing is is like being realistic and understanding. Mm-hmm. You know, like. Number one, it was one ball game against a really good team that, that will probably be in the 1A playoff mix. And it's not a region know. contest either. And, and, and it's not a region contest. Um, and we've got, we had a guy, we had a, a starter that was injured, uh, a two-way starter that was injured. Um, we've got a ton of new kids and young kids. Uh, but the, the facts are, like, this is true small, small school, high school football in a sense that you're gonna have these ebbs and flows of, of talent. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you look back, you know, the, the, the great thing is, if you look back in history, um, it's happened in history, you know. Bobby Overton's one of the best to ever do it. If you look back at his records, he had a couple good years, and he had a couple mm-hmm. bad years. Have good years and have bad years. So, um, you know, the, the reality is that. Uh, the reality is, uh, we got bumped from 2A to 3A because we truly have 3A numbers. But the reality is, um, in those numbers, we don't have very many males. So, um, you know, <clears throat> you kind of have to, again, you have to look at the facts and you have to face the facts and then you have to build on it. And, and from a fan standpoint, um, it's a great opportunity to really be a fan yeah. and really be able to uh, support the kids that are out there and, and the kids that are in the band and the kids that cheer and, and all that stuff. It, it's an opportunity to truly support them um, because I get that the, um, in, in coaching we get the, hey, we're, we're behind you, we're behind you. Well, you know, we have some adversity and, and, and our record is 500 or, or a little under 500. And those, those ones that are behind you and behind you, they, all of a sudden they're way behind you. And, and you can't find them, but um, if you're one of those fans, then, then you're not a true fan anyway. If you're if you're a fan that understands it and, and knows, hey, these kids are young, they're going to try to, you know, they're out there trying and doing what they can, and you can support that, and you can support the the kids because at the end of the day, that's who it's about. Uh, then hey, we're 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 our, we we need you, and we need you there on Friday supporting us. Vincent beat uh, Winterboro. Friday night, and uh, what about this Vincent team this season? What have you seen on tape of them? Uh, Vincent, they've got some size. Uh, they've got some size up front. Uh, linebacker play is pretty good. Uh, they get to the ball pretty quick. Uh, offensively, they've got a couple guys that can tote it. Um, quarterback does a good job running the offense and, and leading that offense, and he, he's a threat to run or throw the ball, uh, so we've got to make sure that he's covered and, and make sure that we're, we're keying him and um, you know, it's a it's a, a big contrast from what we saw last week. So you go from a, a wishbone to a, a spread look. Um, so a big, big difference in, in what we saw from, from a week ago. Talk about, Coach, you, you mentioned earlier about the uh, great players that we've had the last few years at B.B. Comer has gone on now to collegiate uh, football. Uh, where do you think we are as far as 
I know there's uh, quite a bit of drop off, but uh, where do you see our talent level in the next two, three years, maybe? Uh, we've got a young group that's coming up that's going to be really, really good. So um, our ninth grade group is a really, really small group. I think there's like four or five of them. We have a big 10th grade group, uh, a small junior group. Um, but we have an eighth grade group that, that is pretty strong if they'll stay together. Uh, and we have a seventh grade group currently that, that's uh, going to be pretty good. So uh, we actually have a junior high, we're playing a junior high schedule this year. So we're playing a true seventh, eighth grade schedule mm -hmm. uh, this year starting September 10th uh, with those seventh and eighth graders so that they can play together and play against other seventh and eighth graders. Whereas in the past we've had, we've been in a JV schedule and we've played, you know, seventh through tenth grade, you know, and uh, some schools that you play, they'll throw a, a junior or, or 12 in there to play. So uh, we're, we're going to even it out and, and just play that seventh and eighth grade uh, schedule and, and we're just playing seventh and eighth graders. A lot of times if we've had success, we will kind of just expect that success mm -hmm. to automatically continue. And of course, it, it doesn't work that way. How did the kids react after the loss Friday night? Uh, that, that was probably one of the um, one of the things that I was not uh, pleased with overall is uh, just how we handled it and, and how we compartmentalized it and um, you know it, it shows some growth where we, we, we've got to grow mm -hmm. um, you know for our seniors uh, our seniors have been on a great ride and they've been they've had some good uh, some good times through all this but our seniors don't remember when they were sophomores, mm -hmm. and uh, they don't remember what it's like to be a sophomore. So, um, you know, in, in, when when those guys were sophomores, they most of them saw pretty limited playing time because we had a lot ahead of them. Um, so, uh, you know, they they've got to understand that at this point in time, you're you're really like big brother, and and you've got to pull those sophomores along. So. Um, earlier in the week, I took our, our starting offense and lined them up, and I said, all right, if you're a sophomore or younger, take a knee. And six kids took a knee. And I told the, uh, the seniors that start, there's five seniors that start, I said, all right, look around. I said, run a play without them. Hmm. Like, well, I, we can't. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So. Um, well, you, you have to be a, 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 a visual teacher with these guys and, and, and show them things like that and, and hope that they, um, that they kind of get that aspect and get that picture because, you know, a, after that point, hey, all right, so, so your, your sophomores are down. I said, look over here. Who, who do you want to have? Who, who can take their spot? Well, there's not anybody that can take their spot. We don't have a lot of, line-wise, we don't have a lot of linemen. Um, and the other thing is, you look on our roster, we have 10 seniors, okay? Two of them haven't played in four years. They, you know, their buddies have been on them long enough to come out, come out, come out. Right. So two of them haven't played. Uh, I'm sorry, three of them haven't played in four years. Uh, two of them have seen limited playing time, and then five of them have been with us all along. So technically, you see a roster of 10, but you got five that haven't experienced. So... You know, I, I'm a realist. I'm, I'm a, you know, I'm a straightforward person. Uh, it's not always the best thing, I guess, but uh, I, I'm very honest. Uh, my wife says I'm mean, but I'm, I'm honest. Uh, and the honest fact is that uh, we will, we will be as successful as our seniors allow us to be. We'll okay. be as successful as they um, lead us to be. All right. What about volleyball? We started volleyball yet? Yes. Some volleyball's underway. Um, they've played. Uh, played last weekend, they played yesterday uh, on the road, and then they played today. So, uh, new, new area for volleyball, um, area is uh, Chillsburg, Altamont, and Midfield. So, a um, lot, lot of uh, question marks there about, you know, kind of what we're going to see and uh, what, what kind of teams we have in our area. But uh, they, they've played, uh, we've got a couple uh, a couple older girls, uh, yeah, they're kind of in the same boat. They got a couple mm -hmm. older girls and younger girls. So <laughs> it's, uh, it's kind of an interesting mix. But uh, well, we have a good group of there. Uh, McKenna Harvey is one of our uh, leaders on the volleyball team and uh, does a good job in, in trying to lead those girls. All right. Coach Adam Fossett, head football coach and athletic director at B.B. Comer, our guest. 
The Tigers on the road to Vincent. Take on the Yellow Jackets, 7 o'clock kick tomorrow night. Coach, good luck, and we'll see you next week. Yes, sir. Thank you. Coach Adam Fawcett Show this morning, of course. Uh, uh, we with us every uh, Friday morning, or Thursday morning, I should say, brought to you by Marvel City Pharmacy. More daybreak just ahead. <laughs> Our national anthem brought to you by Silicaga Glass tonight on uh, North Broadway. Uh, Debbie Sanders and the staff at Silicaga Glass, proud to be a part of uh, high school football. And they've presented our, our colors for a number of years, and we appreciate that. Uh, Debbie Sanders and the folks at Silicaga Glass, hope that you and your family has a wonderful Labor Day weekend, and uh, hope you can enjoy some football tonight. 91 degrees. Uh, in downtown Sylacauga this morning or this evening and of course at 91 degrees here in Vincent as well as we get you set for the start of a non-region matchup between 2A Vincent and 3A BB Colmer. Now Vincent coming off a 19-6 win over uh, Winneboro last uh, Friday night and uh, Jaden Roberts and Landon Archer uh, scored uh, twice for Vincent as they uh, uh, beat uh, Winneboro and Wadley uh, went into Legion Stadium and knocked off B.B. Calmer 34 to 6. It was like 15 to 6 at halftime and uh, but B.B. Calmer did not have a, s a good second half. You heard Coach Fawcett and saw him talking about B.B. Uh, Calmer losing their edge a little bit and we're some coming off uh, uh, losing three starters that uh, were really, really uh, key players last year gone on to universities to play college football, and you're trying to uh, plug in the holes there, and you've got to depend on some folks like uh, uh, Raylon Sims. Uh, Sims is a senior this year, and he plays multiple positions. You may see him lined up at quarterback. You may see him lined up at running back. Uh, also, Richard Weed is another senior. And he's number nine. And uh, uh, Max Fawcett, he's just a sophomore. And Coach Adam Fawcett is Max's father. And, you know, they're going to be patient with Max. He's just a young kid. And uh, this is his first real action as a high school football player and quarterback. And so uh, they're going to depend on him developing as well. Dontrell uh, Datron Wells is another senior on this team. And uh, so they're going to be looking at some of these guys to step in tonight. Seth Pettit is another senior on this team. So they're going to be looking at some of these guys to uh, really play well tonight. And uh, Brown, who missed last week because of an injury, he's back tonight. So the defense and offensive line should be a little bit better uh, tonight than they were last Friday night in that loss to Wadley. Now, Vincent. Uh, under Coach uh, Lucas Weatherford. Uh, he uh, likes his team, and uh, they are ranked in the top five in 2A right now. And so uh, they will uh, uh, be looking to this game tonight as uh, captains for Vincent is uh, Lane Sims, number one. Uh, number 12 is Landon Archer. Number 19 is uh, uh, Dante Robertson. And uh, Aiden Yesaway, the middle linebacker, number 10. He is another captain for the Vincent Yellow Jackets, who are 1 and 0 on the season. B.B. Comer 0 and 1, as B.B. Comer's captains uh, uh, will be making their way out on the field in just a minute. And these two teams are very familiar with each other. Uh, they were both in 2A the last several years. B.B. Uh, Comer moved up from 2A to 3A this season. And uh, this is a non-region game, as was the Wadley game last week. So all the cards are still on the table for B.B. Comer if they can improve. And this is a very young football team, uh, the B.B. Comer Tigers. And Vincent uh, is a seasoned team. Uh, and they're looking at this season right here 
uh, to be something that they can remember for years to come in Vincent, Alabama in Shelby County. High school football tonight brought to you by Sarah Automotive on Highway 280 in Sylacauga. Also in part by State Representative District 33, Ben Robbins, Donahue Physical Therapy, uh, Bailey Heating and Air, and Toyota of Sylacauga. Marble City Pharmacy, Sylacauga Parks and Rec, Amya, Heritage South Federal Credit Union, Community Funeral Home, Lori Darlings in Fayetteville, also Earlene's Florist, Stop and Shop Auto Sales, Sylacauga Glass, and Curtis and Son Funeral Home with, uh, along with Bandit's Bar and Grill. And Bandit's Bar and Grill providing our pregame meal for the, all our broadcasters uh, uh, for tonight's game. So uh, we'll be get this one going in just a couple of minutes here on TV 47, WOIL Television, and whatever uh, media form you're watching on tonight, we welcome you uh, to Vincent, Alabama as the Vincent Yellow Jackets and the B.B. Comer Tigers get together uh, in this one tonight. We've got other action around the area. Uh, Fayetteville is at Billingsley after uh, Fayetteville knocks off Childersburg last week. Childersburg at home for their first uh, uh, game of the uh, their home schedule as they'll take on Talladega. Talladega's lost 22 games in a row. So Childersburg hoping to extend that tonight uh, in Childersburg at John Cox Stadium. Also, uh, in action tonight is Central of Coosa County. The Cougars under Coach Flowers, uh, they take on Randolph County down in Hanover tonight. So uh, and Sylacauga is hosting uh, Montevala. Uh, Sylacauga and Montevala have never played each other before. So that should be an interesting game uh, in Sylacauga as well. B.B. Comer making their way out on their sideline now. And B.B. Comer always travels well. They have a good contingent of fans that travel with them and uh, they making their way out on the sideline now coach Adam Fawcett in his seventh year as B.B. Calmer head coach of course he's the athletic director there as well and other sports going on uh, this fall season uh, includes uh, volleyball and uh, volleyball team uh, in action this week also captains for B.B. Uh, Calmer tonight uh, is uh, number six, uh, Logan Holland. And we'll pick the others up in just a moment as they head out to the field. One captain is Richard Weed. Uh, he's one of the seniors. And uh, pick up the other captain. Oh, that's Raylon Sims, uh, another senior for B.B. Calmer. These teams are familiar with each other. Uh, been some coaching staff changes this season for B.B. Comer as well. And Coach Fossett's brought in a couple of new faces uh, for this season. And so they are evolving with their coaching staff as well as their football team. We mentioned it's a young team. And they're coming off uh, a uh, semifinal berth uh, last year in the 2A playoffs. They were in uh, the finals, uh, actually, uh, yeah, finals uh, last uh, two years ago. And so they uh, have been around the last several years. And this is the best run of athletes B.B. Comer's had since Coach Bobby Overton was there several years ago. So B.B. Comer has deferred to the second half. They'll kick off. And we're just moments away from the start of uh, this uh, matchup tonight between B.B. Comer and the Vincent Yellow Jackets. And uh, our kickoff tonight is brought to you in part by uh, Donahue Physical Therapy. Uh, now, Ben and his staff, Ben Donahue, uh, if your doctor prescribes physical therapy, your next step is to say, hey, doc, I want Donahue Physical Therapy to do my physical therapy. So uh, pretty simple right there on West Fort Williams in Silicon. B.B. Comer's team coming out. Uh, from under the goal post and headed over to their sideline. We mentioned it's a hot night, uh, 91 degrees uh, at uh, game time. The temperatures will fall as the sun sets. And next week, the uh, temperature is going to be in the 80s and 70s for daytime high, so it'll be a lot better than this Labor Day weekend. It has been a hot August for sure. And here it is, August the 30th, we've got one more day to go. 
college football season for the state of Alabama uh, started last night with Jacksonville State losing to Coastal Carolina and UAB a winner over Alcorn State uh, at uh, Progressive Field in Birmingham last night after a deluge of rain and a delay of about an hour at Progressive Stadium in uh, Birmingham. So uh, we got underway with two uh, teams from our state last night. We'll get some more tomorrow. Alabama and hosting Western Carolina and Auburn uh, playing tomorrow night at Jordan-Hare Stadium as they take on Alabama A&M. We're set to kick off, and we are underway with Tristan Garrett kicking away. Short kick falling on at the 44-yard line. So excellent field position for Vincent as falling on it is Carter Blackburn, one of the tight ends. He's 6'2", uh, 175 pounds. So let's get going with Vincent offensively against a B.B. Comer defense that was uh, has some holes to fill from last week against Wadley. Uh, Wadley ran the football well, and see what Vincent tries to do here tonight. Quarterback is Cason Fields, a senior. Jaden Roberts uh, was a key last week. He's a junior, and Roberts has got the football, and B.B. Comer knocks him down after a gain of about three yards. B.B. Comer expecting a much better game defensively tonight. Michael Kirksey over for the Tigers to help out on the tackle there. So it'll be second down. And uh, they give him a line of scrimmage so he didn't gain really anything. They go right back to him. He comes back the same way. And he's cut down for no gain. Nice tackle, open field tackle by Sims, the senior. So it'll be third down. And they give him uh, maybe two yards. So it'll be third down and a long eight for the Vincent Yellow Jackets. Just underway in Vincent, Alabama on a hot evening for high school football, as you'd expect in the Deep South on a Friday night in late August. Third and long as Fields takes a snap, three-step drop to throw. He's being pressured, and he is going to be pulled down. And a nice tackle. B.B. Comer had a lot of people around the football then, and that's what Coach Fossett wants. He wanted pressure on this uh, with this defensive front, and they got it then. So to bring up fourth down for the Vincent Yellow Jackets. Landon Archer to punt. Archer's a sophomore. Long driving kick that bounces high in the air and is picked up by Richard Weed and Weed Gets back to about the 23-yard line. It'll be first down for B.B. Comer. So a good job defensively by the Tigers on the first uh, series as three and out against this uh, Vincent offense. Let's see what B.B. Comer can do here with the football first and ten. Sims is going to line up at quarterback. Sims keeps it himself. He's looking to throw it. Now fires is caught and dropped in and out of the hands of Jacob Swain, the sophomore. Pretty good throw, but Swain turned up field and just saw it slip off his hand, second and 10. Vincent uh, with an opening season win over Winneboro last week in Winneboro. Sims keeps it. Sims is a good running back. Uh, he he uh, got some good speed and power too, and uh, he's going to be about uh, two yards short of the first down. Bring up third down now for B.B. Comer. 
B.B. Comer threw it a little bit last week, but uh, Sims is more of a running quarterback. So third down and two. Sims is stood up and knocked back. He'll be short of the first down. They bring up fourth down now as uh, Hardy in to make the stop for Vincent along with McMillan. So both teams three and out on their first series. Fourth down and two for B.B. Comer. Tristan Garrett, the senior, will punt. Winnebar looks like they're, excuse me, Vincent looks like they're coming after it and uh, gets away a nice punt. And it's going to bounce inside the 30-yard line. So a good roll for Garrett on the punt. They'll spot it inside the 30-yard line, about the 28. So it'll be first down for Vincent from there. Second series of the night for Vincent. Maybe Calmer very stingy on the first drive. Let's see what happens here. Cason Fields is a senior quarterback. Again, big, big play. This is Ja'Cory Brown, the sophomore, getting in the backfield and disrupting the play. That'd be a loss of about five. They missed Brown last week. So it'll be second down and long. Not much. B.B. Comer again with Sims leading the way. Aiden Gassaway on the carry. So it'll be third down and about 13. We apologize for the uh, lack of graphics tonight. We had some trouble meshing our stuff with the scoreboard uh, at Benson. They've got a new board and uh, Whistles blow and a penalty flag is down. Let's see what the penalty is going to be. Look at the white hat. Offside against BB Calmer. And Coach Foss is not going to like that. Still short of the first down, but more manageable. The third down and about eight now. No score early on in the football game. Quarterback keeps and he's tackled for maybe a couple of yards. That's all he got. And that's Michael Kirksey, the senior, with the stop. So to bring up fourth down. So again, Vincent will punt. B.B. Comer will get it back. Our first down tonight brought to you by Early East Flores. When we have a first down, they'll be sponsored. B.B. Comer put some pressure on that time, and he gets a nice punt away. And uh, this is a weed on the return. He doesn't get much out to about the 30 yard line. So it'll be first down for B.B. Comer with seven minutes to go in the first quarter. No score. Vincent, uh, as we mentioned, they're in 2A classification and they're ranked in the top five. I think they're number three uh, this week after a win over Winterboro last week. Sims throws it, 
is caught by Weed, and he picks up five before uh, he's uh, knocked down by Landon Archer. So second down and about five. You may be wondering where uh, my grandson Zach is. Well, Zach is playing high school football now, and he is dressed out with the varsity at Sylacauga in Sylacauga at Legion Stadium tonight for the game against Montevallo. So thus going it alone tonight. Sims is going to be sacked way back, and he breaks a tackle. And he's finally pushed out of bounds, but uh, uh, Sims really did that on his own to get back to where he managed to get back to the line of scrimmage. So to bring up third down and still long. Vincent put a lot of pressure on then. Landon Hardy, one of the leaders of this uh, Vincent defense, defensive end. He's a 6'3", 260-pound junior. Zach Moorhead limps off for the Yellow Jackets. Nothing, 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 nothing. As, uh, Tristan Garrett is knocked down. And on the tackle, Grayson Gould. So it'll bring up a fourth down and about eight. So we've got a heat timeout, looks like now. While we've got a minute, 526 to go in the first quarter. And let me uh, mention our sponsors once again uh, tonight. And we appreciate uh, Don and all the folks at Sarah Automotive on Highway 280 in Silicon. They've been our corporate sponsor of high school football for uh, a number of years. And we always appreciate them out there at Sarah Automotive, at Sarah uh, Honda, and Sarah Nissan, and Tony Sarah Ford. Also, uh, Bailey Heating and Air, and uh, that was a good time to have that air conditioner working for sure. And uh, Mr. Bailey and the folks there, as a matter of fact, they did our heating and air at our home, and they're doing uh, a re-install uh, uh, of a heating and cooling system here at our studio. Fourth down. Low line drive punt that takes a Tiger roll. And it's going to go inside the 25 yard line to about the 23. So Vincent will take over for their third series of the night. Neither team has marked a first down yet. So we'll see what happens with Vincent in their third try here in the first quarter. Quarterback Cason Fields is a 5'11", 155-pound senior. And he has uh, Aiden Gassaway back there with him now in the backfield. Gassaway's got it. B.B. Comer's got him after a pickup of a few yards. So bring up second down and about six, make it seven yards now. E.B. Cone with Sims, Borden, Davenport, Brown, and Wells on the front. Second down and long. And uh, the Tigers blow that play up. <laughs> Quickly getting there is uh, Riley. And also uh, Michael Kirksey. So to bring up third down and long for Vincent. Not much offense by either team so far. Quarterback keeps this time and no running room at all. 
B.B. Comer is just Jakari Brown, the sophomore there. Going to bring up fourth down and long. Fourth and about 14. So neither team offensively uh, able to do much so far. Landon Archer, the sophomore to punt. Good snap, punt out. And here is Weed from his 40. He got the 45 and he's tackled at the 49 yard line. Feet kind of slipped out from under him a little bit. Lane Mims, the sophomore down on the tackle for Vincent. 5.14 to go in the first quarter. at the 49-yard line. I don't know if that scoreboard is right or not. It seemed like it's been there a little while. But first and 10, B.B. Comer. The Tigers need a drive here. And Sims looking to the sideline. He moved Kirksey over to the right side and penalty flags are down. And that may be a delay a game, I'm not sure. Let's see. Oh, you know, it gets Vincent. They may have been offside themselves. They were. So it'll be first and five for the Tigers now. Moves it inside Vincent territory to the 46 yard line. Ruiz, excuse me, uh, Parrish is a center for B.B. Comer. All new offensive line for the B.B. Comer Tigers this season. Garrett comes to the near side. Four receivers to the bottom of the screen. And, uh, looks like B.B. Comer a little quick off the snap then. That's going to Cost them five yards. They'll take the five back that they uh, gained a minute ago. Neither team offensively uh, anything to write home about right now. Moves it back to the 49 yard line. Sims bobbles a snap, now pulls it down. He's in trouble and tries to run out down the sideline. He goes and he can do that. Sims has got power and he's got speed. And let's see where the officials mark it. It's inside the 40 and at about to the 37 yard line. So a nice run off of really a messed up play up as he bobbled a snap and pulls it down and runs it to the 37 yard line. That is a early for his first down. That's the first first down of the night for either team, I think. Sims takes a snap and uh, gives to Weed, excuse me. Uh, that is Garrett. Garrett bounces off a couple of tackers. He's a uh, tackler, he's still moving. And he's close to a first down. Pick up of about nine on the carry. So Garrett was hit at the line of scrimmage and uh, bounced off a tackler and runs it for uh, about eight yards, they say it is. Vince has got an injured player slow getting up. 2.31 to go in the first quarter. Double zeros, and neither team has scored in the first quarter. This is the deepest penetration by either team. B.B. Comer has the football inside the Vincent. Uh, let's see where they spot that in just a minute. I'm trying to see who the injured player is for Vincent. That is uh, one of their leaders, Landon Hardy, defensive end. 
And they certainly don't want to lose him. He is an excellent player. And he is uh, still down on the turf for sure. We've got just a minute. Let me uh, tell you about my buddy Rick Morris. Uh, Rick Morris, he's a hometown guy from Sylacauga. And uh, he's done well for himself. And he's in trucking and logistics. Uh, he doesn't drive a truck, but he's driven a truck before. And he's got a huge company. They, they are uh, building a brand new warehouse. Uh, and we'll tell you more about that in just a couple of minutes. But uh, going to employ a lot of people as they're helping Landon Hardy off the field. And that does not look good. Hardy is a junior, and he made a lot of tackles last week. So he has helped off the field and looks like an ankle problem. We'll see and try to figure out something for you as soon as we get more information. So it's uh, second down at about two for B.B. Comer. Deepest penetration by either team. B.B. Comer is uh, right around the 29-yard line in Vincent territory. B.B. Comer has uh, Raylon Sims and Garrett in the backfield. And Garrett's got it. He's got a hole. Garrett's got the first down and uh, pulls ahead for a couple of more yards. That's uh, Erlene's Flores first down for Tristan Garrett, the senior. And they'll move the chains inside the 25-yard line to about the 24. B.B. Comer staying on the ground with this drive. Jacob Swain, the sophomore, comes to the bottom of the screen. Richard Weed in the slot. Riley on this side as well. Rolling to throw and in trouble, tries to pull away and does. He's on the sideline, that's what he can do. He's got a first down, penalty flag is down and that may be against B.B. Comer. Let's see for sure, but uh, they threw it where you'd normally see maybe a block in the back, but not sure. Nice run by Raylon Sims. Is holding against B.B. Comer, and you see that a lot of times, and that is a backbreaker on a big, big gain for the senior quarterback. So penalties hurting the Tigers. They'll mark it off. And back to the 29-yard uh, line. So first down at about 14. B.B. Comer brings in Max Fawcett at quarterback, the sophomore. And he will hand off and some running room for Garrett. And Garrett's on the sideline. And he runs inside the 15-yard line. So that'll be uh, Erlene's, no, not quite. He picked up nine, looks like, maybe. So second down and a yard for B.B. Comer. They're running on the left side. Let's see if they continue there or not. Fawcett with Garrett behind him. Garrett's got it. Garrett's got the first down. Erlene's Flores first down to about the 13-yard line. Marcus Hall along with uh, Trying to see 70, that is uh, McMillan. So first down for the Tigers. And they're just outside the 10 yard line, probably at the 11 looks like. Not much there. As Vincent swarms and makes the tackle, Aiden Gassaway, the 
the middle linebacker slides in to make the stop. And that's going to do it for the first quarter with no score from uh, Vincent Stadium in Shelby County as Vincent uh, and B.B. Calmer knotted up in this non-region matchup. Vincent is uh, class 2A and B.B. Calmer just moved up to 3A and B.B. Calmer, you look at their schedule and their region play uh, will uh, begin against Glenwood next week at Legion Stadium in Silicon Glenwood, uh, Glenwood is a brand new opponent for B.B. Comer. It'll be the first region game for the Tigers at Legion Stadium next week. You oftentimes see in this heat players getting cramps in their legs, and B.B. Comer has got uh, a guy down on the near sideline, uh, on the far sideline with cramps. And so we'll see... Uh, he gets up okay. Coach Fawcett in his seventh year at B.B. Comer talking to his team. And gotta be pretty pleased with this drive even though they've hurt themselves with a couple of penalties. Uh, they're running the football very well. And he wanted to establish that, you know. He doesn't have some of the guys he had last year. And this football team has gotta learn uh, they're young, and uh, they continue to work hard. And Vincent, on the other side of the coin, uh, they feel like this can be their year. We'll see what develops here in the second quarter. B.B. Comer driving with a second down. They go back with... Uh, Sims at quarterback. Garrett back there with him. Sims rolling, looking, looking, throwing on the run and is caught right at the goal line, about the one yard line. And a nice catch, nice throw and catch as B.B. Comer. Jacob Swain, the sophomore with the reception. So it'll be first and goal for the Tigers. Eleven fifty-four to go in the first half. BB Comer with a nice drive here. Sims with a little pitch and uh, getting close to the goal line, and it is a touchdown for Tristan Garrett from about two yards out. So BB Comer culminating. A long drive, and they put six points on the board to go ahead 6 nothing. That touchdown drive by B.B. Comer covered a lot of ground, brought to you by Heritage South Federal Credit Union. Touchdown on the board for the Tigers. And the point after, Seth Pettit. Out of the hole to Fawcett, low snap, and the kick is blocked, no good. So B.B. Comer with a 6-0 lead, it wasn't a good snap, and Fawcett had trouble getting it down, and Pettit didn't have a chance for that uh, point after. So B.B. Comer with a 6-0 lead over the Vincent Yellow Jackets. And we're working in the second quarter of this non-region matchup from Vincent, Alabama. So B.B. Comer coming off a, a game last week where they had trouble sustaining any kind of drive put together a good one against a good defense with the Vincent Yellow Jackets. So the Tigers ran the ball well. They threw it only, I think, one time on this drive, and it was completed for a first and goal. And so B.B. Comer with uh, a good start here in the second quarter, leading six to nothing. We'll see what Vincent uh, does offensively when they come back out on the football field. B.B. Comer's defense has kind of stymied them pretty much so far. Both bands will be performing at halftime. The marching sound of goal of B.B. Calmer. And of course, the Vincent Yellow Jacket marching band. Tristan Garrett, the senior, will 
kickoff for B.B. Comer. Here we go. Short kick. Taking it to 35, running laterally, and uh, good job defensively by Jacory Brown, the sophomore, to make the tackle. You know, Caden Brown unable to play a lot last week. I don't know if he played at all, but he has done well tonight uh, for B.B. Comer. So they're glad to have him back. At the 34-yard line, it'll be first down for Vincent. B.B. Comer six, Vincent nothing. Cason Fields uh, will start with the uh, Jaden Roberts back there with him now. Roberts had a good game against one of our last week, and Roberts has got the football. B.B. Comer trying to get him outside. And boy, what a hit. And that is uh, a bone rattler by Raylon Sims to knock the ball carrier down for a loss. So B.B. Comer's defense uh, has done well as also. So we've got a timeout here with 11-19 to go in the first half. B.B. Comer leads Vincent by a score of six to nothing. And almost, uh, if you're B.B. Comer, uh, a lot different than it was last week. I know Wadley is ranked in the top five in 1A. Uh, as a matter of fact, they're ranked number two this week. And uh, so they're expected to go far in 1A as they did last year. So it wasn't any surprise that Wadley played well. It was just a surprise that B.B. Comer didn't play as well as Coach Fawcett uh, wanted his team to play. So uh, we'll see what happens here tonight. First half so far has been pretty good for B.B. Comer uh, defensively and that last drive offensively for the Tigers. Second and long. Fields goes back and nothing there for the running back, Roberts. Dylan Davenport, the freshman for B.B. Comer makes a tackle, big number 70. B.B. Comer got a lot of young guys, but they got to grow up, they got to play. So third down and about 16 for Vincent. Got some time. Now he's flushed out and throws it, and it is caught. First down and more. B.B. Comer busted coverage in, and uh, all the way down inside B.B. Comer territory is Caden Carroll. And he's at the B.B. Comer 47-yard line. It looked like B.B. Comer was going to get the quarterback, but he got away from pressure and delivered. It'll be a first down for the Yellow Jackets, their first first down of the night. At B.B. Comer's 47-yard line. Looking to throw it again. He's going to pull it down. B.B. Comer missing some tackles and still running inside the 35 to the 34-yard line. Penalty flag is down, but B.B. Comer missed several opportunities on the tackle. Let's see what the penalty is. He's at the 35-yard line now. And it's holding against Vincent. And Coach Weatherford is not pleased with that. That can be a dry buster. They'll mark it off from the 35. And go back to the 45. So it'll be a first down and uh, about eight, maybe seven yards to go. So the 
penalty and negated a long run. B.B. Coleman missed several opportunities for tackles in. Throwing it in the flat. It looked like that hit the ground as they completed it to Lane Mims. But not much uh, on the gain at all. B.B. Palmer quickly over Richard Weed, one of the first to get there. Harris. Harris is an eighth grader. He's uh, playing cornerback tonight for B.B. Palmer. Eighth grade. Low snap. Like a little hole right there, but he gets it out and he throws it away, incomplete. Intended for uh, Archer. B. Palmer had good coverage and pressure on the quarterback, so it'll bring up third down and nine. Possession down for Vincent at their at the B.B. Comer 45-yard line. B.B. Comer leads it 6-0. Fields to throw it. He's in trouble, pulls it down. He's going to run it. He's got some room. Nice cut by Fields. He's inside the 30-yard line and a first down for the Vincent Yellow Jackets. The 28. It'll be a first down jackets, and the drive continues. B.B. Comer had a couple of chances, but didn't close the deal. And they moved the chains. So early East Forest first down. And we may have a timeout for B.B. Comer here now. Big crowd on hand for both teams. B.B. Comer always travels well. 9.15 to go in the first half. and. Uh, B.B. Comer leading Vincent by a score of 6-0. Jonathan Grimes doing yeoman's work uh, here in Vincent tonight. And uh, Jonathan is the associate pastor and youth pastor at Estelle Community Church. And he is one of my cohorts at Curtis and Son Funeral Home. And he does a lot of good work in our community, including taking care of us on Friday night for high school football. So, Jonathan, keep up the good work. We're going to start paying you if you keep it up. So with a timeout, charge to B.B. Colmer, and uh, the sun has set now, but it's still rather warm here in Vincent as uh, we get midway in the second quarter. Well, here we go. As the Yellow Jackets trying to keep their drive going, here's the quarterback again. Pulls it down, and he's doing some work. Keeping the football himself. He goes inside the 25-yard line to about the 23. Be second down and four. The Tigers going to, B.B. Comer going to have to keep an eye on this uh, senior quarterback. Cason Fields as he's found something that he can excel in and he's doing it well. Inside handoff to Roberts. And that's going to bring up third down. Two yards to go for the first down. Inside the 20 yard line at about the 19. We've seen Fields call his own number several times on this drive and he's done well with it. He goes inside the first down to Gassaway. He'll move the chains for early as for his first down. The drive continues for Vincent, trailing by a score of six to nothing. It's the BB Comer Tigers. It's a home opener for Vincent tonight in uh, Shelby County, Alabama. And 
this time, B.B. Calmer just eats the quarterback up. That's Jakari Brown, number 33. Loss on the play. Loss of about four. So it'll be second down and 14. Brown just blew that play up then. Corey Brown's a sophomore. Second in law. Pressure from the backside now, throwing on the run. It's incomplete. Bring up third down now. B.B. Comer leading six to nothing, and this is the best drive that Vinson has had tonight. But, uh, they hadn't scored any points yet. So third and long. Third and about uh, 14. Fields, three-step drop. He's in trouble. Now steps up, and he's going to be pulled down. This time, Tristan Garrett stayed home and uh, knocks the quarterback down. It'll be fourth down. And Vincent calls a timeout. Fourth down, and again, the yard. So it should be fourth down and 13. So here you go here with uh, Vincent deep in Tiger territory, 627 to go in the first half. And B.B. Comer leading by a score of six to nothing on the Sarah Automotive High School Game of the Week. You see the Vincent cheerleaders uh, on the sideline, and there's a lot of them. And they work hard just like the football team does, just like the band does. And a lot of cheerleaders on the cheer team for sure. All the Vincent Yellow Jackets. So the officials blow the whistles back into play. And to bring up fourth down, let's see what Coach Weatherford calls for here. Fourth and long. Don't have to get the first down with a fourth and 14. B.B. Comer comes with pressure here. You got to keep an eye on Fields. He broke a couple of plays when it looked like he was going to get sacked. But he got away. And let's see what happens here on fourth down and long. B.B. Comer coming after. He steps up again. He's got running room. He's down the sideline. And just like before, Fields stepped up in the pocket, and B.B. Comer couldn't contain him. And he runs for a first down, first and goal for the Vincent Yellow Jackets. So it's been casing Fields on this drive, fourth down and 14, and he gets the first down. So first and goal. This time, B.B. Comer out to make the tackle, and uh, good job by uh, Sims. <laughs> Let's see what they're doing here. Oh. I guess they'd give him a touchdown, right? Weird look. Yeah, now they're gonna go for the extra point. So they did get in the touch, get in the end zone for the touchdown. So hard to see from the angle we've got. So we're tied at six. The point after to follow. Kick is up and the kick is no good. So we remain tied at six now. So Cation uh, Fields led Vincent down the field and uh, gets a touchdown, 5.37 to go in the first half. We're tied at six in this non-region contest between Vincent and B.B. Comer. 
One of our great sponsors of high school football uh, tonight, of course, and they've been with us for a long time, is Amya. Amya here uh, in Talladega County, in Sylacauga, and they employ a lot of people, and uh, employ people from Shelby County as well. So Amya, one of our great sponsors of high school football, and uh, my friend Charles Woods at Community Funeral Home. Charles and Kadero Wood at Community Funeral Home. Pre-need to at-need funeral services, funerals, burials, or cremation. It's Community Funeral Home, 511 Edgewood Drive in Silicon. Proud sponsors of high school football on TV 47 WOIL television. In a game that's uh, seen its ebbs and flows with both teams. We had no score through the first quarter. B.B. Comer scores in the second quarter on a nice drive, and Vincent does the same on their next possession. So we're tied at six. Vincent kicking off. Bouncing inside the 25 and at the 18 yard line where B.B. Coleman will go to work and Sims was going to field it, but it bounced away from him and he slipped, lost his footing and gets back on it. See that market at the 20 yard line. So it'll be first and 10 B.B. Coleman with a score tied at six each. This doesn't count in the region standings, but B.B. Comer doesn't want to go in 0-2 for sure. Sims throws it, and it's a low throw, but uh, Weed tries to make something out of it, and Vincent thinks it's incomplete. But the officials Looking it over, and there'll be a second down pickup of about two, maybe, maybe three. It'll be second and long for the Tigers. And that was a low throw from Sims. Second down. Garrett's penalty flag flies in. Grayson Gould, uh, he's a linebacker, and he's made some noise tonight holding against B.B. Comer. Another penalty against the Tigers. And that'll mark off 10 yards. So that pushes B.B. Comer deeper into their own territory. inside uh, the 15 yard line. Sims takes a low snap, he's in trouble. Now pulls it down, reverses his field, and he's got a little running room. Sims has got some speed now. He's in the secondary, still running. And Erlene's floor is first down for Raylon Sims. And that's what he can do. He can make a good play out of a bad play. They'll move the chains. Erlene's floor is first down. Out to about the 37 yard line. That's what you get with a quarterback like Sims. So the Tigers will give him a breather and bring in sophomore Max Fawcett. Oh, here he goes. That's Garrett. Garrett's got a first down and more inside the 40 to about the 37 yard line. Tristan Garrett's had a good second quarter for sure for the Tigers. I think it was uh, today that uh, Coach Fawcett, he and his wife uh, celebrating their anniversary. I think that's right. Or maybe it's her birthday, one of the two. 
So first down for B.B. Culver. We'll have Kirksey in the backfield this time. And Kirksey takes the handoff and gets two or three yards. And Vincent closes the deal out there. Vincent got a good salty defense. That's uh, Gassaway again, the linebacker making the tackle. Pick up a two, second down and eight. Got to give these kids breathers because it is a hot night tonight. Second and long. B.B. Comer is going to have to call a timeout, looks like. Yeah. So, B.B. Uh, Comer with a second down and eight. The Tigers and Yellow Jackets tied at six. You can tell this heat is taking its toll on the players. 323 to go in the first half. B.B. Comer would love to put points on the board in the half to go to the dressing room with the lead. So they're second and eight. We're tied at six. Vincent and B.B. Comer. Vincent, a 2A school. B.B. Comer moving up to 3A. And you say, well, what difference does that make? It makes a lot of difference because B.B. Comer is a small 3A school. And uh, their schedule has changed. They're playing some teams that they've never played before on their schedule this year, including uh, Glenwood, which will be their first region opponent. They play uh, Lee Scott Academy as well, which is a region opponent. They've never played either one of those two teams. So after the timeout at the 36 yard line, BB Comer with a second down and eight. Trying to keep the drive alive. And Sims is back in at quarterback. Coach Fawcett playing it smart, giving him a breather from time to time, and he brings a sophomore in. So he's going back with the senior now. Sims looking to throw it. He's in trouble, and he tries to dance away, and he may have got back to the line of scrimmage, and that's about it. Vincent with a lot of pressure, and uh, Grayson Gould the senior, 5'9", 195 pounds, is tracking him down. So it'll be third down and eight. B.B. Comer sends uh, Richard Weed to this side along with uh, Riley. Throwing the home run ball. He's got a man open and it's almost intercepted. Moving over quickly to uh, recover is uh, Dante Robertson. Robertson had that thing slip in his fingers. He could have had the interception. So to bring up fourth down now. B.B. So Comer sees uh, what looked like a promising drive. Now with a fourth down and eight. The Tigers will bring in Max Fawcett, the better thrower of the two. And uh, let's see if Garrett punts here. Down and eight. Fawcett with the snap. He's throwing, and it is caught inside the 20 to the 19-yard line. Richard Weed. And that's early in Flores first down. I believe he got the first down. Maybe he didn't. Yeah. So. Vincent takes over on downs. So about a yard shy of the first down. 2.30 to go in the half, and Vincent will bring their offensive team back out. Cason Fields going all the way at quarterback.
Handoff to Gassaway. B.B. Comer quickly in on the tackle, and that is Caden Brown. No gain on the play. It's a hot, hot night for football. You see people fanning one another on the B.B. Comer sideline in the stands. Not much on the carry for Gassaway. As uh, Michael Kirksey, the senior, cuts him down. Third down. And a long eight for the Yellow Jackets. Minute 20 to go in the half. Low snap, quarterback has to keep it himself and the Tigers wrap him up in the backfield. Got to bring up fourth down. And uh, he becomes Christian Jemison, the sophomore with the tackle. So a timeout on the field as B.B. Comer with 69 seconds wants to uh, get the football back. So Benson will punt. Appreciate all of you looking in on TV 47, WOIL television. Thank all our sponsors for making it possible tonight. A hot, humid evening in Vincent, Alabama. Both teams uh, will kind of refresh themselves at halftime. A little water and a little energy drink and be ready to go for the second half. Fawcett giving his team some last second instruction. Jacob Swain, the sophomore. Coming out on the fourth down and long. Hunter is Landon Archer. Archer. Hits a high climbing punt that's taken in the 28 yard line by Weed. And Weed's looking for some room. Now he comes back and runs out of bounds at about the 36 yard line. Bibi Comer wisely uh, didn't commit a penalty on that run back because uh, he reversed his field a little bit. And oftentimes you'll see that. 36 yard line, first and 10, Bibi Comer with about a minute to go in the first half. Halftime show coming up with both bands performing. Raylon Sims, the senior, will take the snap. Sims didn't fool anybody. Benson stayed with it. And uh, he's pushed out of bounds. Caden Carroll on the tackle. Play stops, uh, clock stops with uh, out of bounds play. So second down and 10. Maybe Coleman may just elect now to get to the dressing room. And we shall see. Riggins, the junior, checks into the game for B.B. Comer in the slot. Throwing the deep ball. He's got a man out there and it's caught. And look at here, B.B. Comer touchdown. <laughs> I mean, that was a great throw and catch. That's to Kirksey. And Kirksey running behind the defender and uh, Radon Sims hit him right in the numbers. B.B. Comer with a 12-6 lead with 36 seconds to go in the half. And Coach Weatherford's got to be beside himself because he was not wanting that to happen. Got behind his defenders. And uh, Sims with a great throw. And Kirksey, the senior, 
hauled it in for a BB Comer touchdown, and they're going for two here. So Sims with a strike to Kirksey for a late BB Comer touchdown. Sims is in trouble. Uh, he's tripped up, and the two point conversion fails as uh, McMillan with a tackle. With 36 seconds to go in the half, B.B. Comer leads Vincent by a score of 12 to 6. Coach Weathersford uh, we're going to talk to his defense and say, hey, we got to do better than that. B.B. Comer beat them on a deep throw, and it looked like Elaine Mims was in coverage, but uh, Kirksey ran by him, and Sims hit him in stride for the touchdown. Coach Fawcett got his team fired up with that touchdown throw and catch, and it's 12 to six now. There's moments away from halftime, and you'll see the marching sound of goal under band director Dan Seaborn, the award-winning B.B. Comer Tiger Band. Of course, Vincent, their band is performing as well tonight. We hope you can stick around and enjoy the band music and the performance by both these bands as they work hard They've got camps in the summertime, summer camps, and man, you see them out there working for hours every day, just like a football team. Fair catch is called for, and that was Calvin Johnson. He weighed the fair catch, but I don't know if the official didn't see it or what. And he decided to run with it, and Gets it up to about the 37 yard line or so. And mark it at 30, or excuse me, the 33 yard line. So with 30 seconds left in the half, BB Comer leads Vincent 12 to six. Coach Fawcett, I'm sure, told his kids, hey, don't let that happen to us defensively. That happened to Vincent a minute ago. So Fields and Roberts in the backfield. Fields gonna keep it himself. And he steps out of bounds at the 36 yard line. Stops the clock. So BB Comer with a late touchdown here in the first half has retaken the lead 12 to six over the Vincent Yellow Jackets. I'm sure both these teams would be glad to get to the dressing room, get a break. Knocked out of bounds is Roberts. And Kirksey there to push him out of bounds and bring up third down and a timeout is called. Officials with a timeout here. If they're going to check to see if it's a first down or not, or what they're going to do. Look, there's a penalty or what? Unsportsmanlike conduct against Vincent. Wow. That's 15 yards. Coach Weatherford getting his team. Now then unsportsmanlike conduct against B.B. Comer. So that's what Coach Weatherford was waiting on. He said, you got this wrong. And that is a big, big penalty, but it goes against B.B. Comer all the way to the Tiger 44-yard line. So you think the half is going to end, but a penalty has set Vincent up with some seconds left on the clock. Yeah, 
official picks his flag up. And I don't know what the conversation is now, but there's 20 seconds left in the half. I didn't see what the penalty was about. But in any event, uh, Coach Foss is not happy about it. And they're bringing one of their players off the field. That's number 50. I don't know who that is. I don't have a, a number here, I don't think. I don't have a name with this number. But Coach Fawcett, not happy with that. So instead of going to the dressing room with a 12-6 lead, now then you've got 20 seconds still left on the clock, and Vincent with some downs to play with at the BP Comer 44-yard line. Better watch Fields. He's broken a couple of plays himself. He looks to throw it. He's going to throw down the middle of the field, and it's intercepted by Richard Weed. Weed's back over the 20, the 30, 35, 38 yard line goes Richard Weed. And Weed with the interception, and that's going to end the half. Not a real good throw by uh, Fields that time. He got six seconds left in the half. So B.B. Comer will probably take a snap and take a knee and hit through the dressing room. I think that's the first turnover of the night for either team. Hughes, a sophomore, checks into the game for B.B. Comer. So the Tigers will take a snap and should end the first half. We'll throw the home run ball again. And it is caught by Weed. Look at him. Is Weed going to score? No. He's tackled inside the 10 yard line as the first half comes to a close. But BB Comer close to breaking another huge late second quarter touchdown. But the Tigers do go to the dressing room with a 12 to 6 lead over the Vincent Yellow Jackets. And let's see if there's a penalty on the play. I don't think so. As uh, first half comes to a close. And we've got both team, uh, both the teams headed to the dressing room. And we've got both bands about to perform. BB Comer leading Vincent by a score of 12 to 6. And let's wait here just a second to see what the officials are going to do. It is halftime, so we'll get to the dressing room. BB Comer 12 and Vincent 6. We got our halftime show coming up. Don't go away. Toyota of Sylacauga has you covered with exclusive VIP direct pricing. Enjoy incredible savings of up to $6,000 off the total suggested retail price on select Toyota models. Experience the thrill of driving a new or used Toyota car, truck, or SUV while keeping more money in your pocket. We don't have it on the lot. We'll find it for you. Drive home in style with VIP direct pricing at Toyota of Sylacauga with up to $6,000 in total savings. ToyotaofSylacauga.com or visit us Highway 280 in Sylacauga. Toyota of Sylacauga. We're worth the drive. Bandit's Bar and Grill is your stop for great food, family fun, and live music. Wednesday night is Cornhole Tournament. Thursday night, Biker Night. Don't forget about the live music too. Great steaks, full bar, awesome appetizers, wings, nachos, tacos, and fried catfish. Stop in today or give us a call at 256-369-2920. That's Bandit's Bar and Grill on Fort Williams and Sylacauga. If you listen carefully, 
you'll hear the roads of Alabama calling. And Sarah Honda has your answer during our Honda Summer Event. Serving you for over 40 years with a great selection of Honda and pre-owned inventories and the Sarah Promise. Take home a new 2024 Honda Accord for $259 a month for 36 months. Or a 2024 Honda HRV for $269 for 36 months. Or receive a loyalty offer of up to $750 on a new Honda CRV. Alabama can be yours to discover in a new vehicle from Sarah Honda in Sylacauga. The all-new Marble City Pharmacy in Sylacauga is your destination for the highest quality health care. Our remodeled and expanded pharmacy gives us the space to serve more patients. We've added a drive through window for those times when you don't feel like getting out of your vehicle. And we still offer delivery within city limits. We feature a full line of over-the-counter medications and supplements. And don't forget our stunning new gift department. New building, same great people. Marble City Pharmacy, here for life.
Inc. is the leading global producer of calcium carbonate and a worldwide distributor of specialty chemicals. Amya has an unwavering commitment to quality and total customer satisfaction through leadership in manufacturing technology, product innovation, application expertise, incomparable service, and an exceptional understanding of our customers' needs. Amya takes pride in continuous direct customer communications to understand their changing needs for new product development and logistical support. Amya Inc. is pleased to have been a part of the Silicaga and surrounding communities since 1992. If you listen carefully, you'll hear the roads of Alabama calling. Tony Sarah Ford has your answer. We offer a great selection of Ford and pre-owned inventories and the Sarah Promise. During our Make It Ford Summer Sales event, take home a 2023 F-150 with 1.9% APR or up to $6,000 in bonus cash. Or a new Expedition with 0% APR and $1,000 bonus cash, plus no payments for 90 days. Alabama can be yours to discover in a new vehicle from Tony Sarah Ford in Sylacauga. Heritage South Credit Union proudly serves the cities of Sylacauga, Childersburg, Moody, and surrounding counties. Unlike regular banks, Heritage South Credit Union is member-owned. And with over 13,000 members, Heritage South Credit Union is the premier financial institution in the markets they serve. Visit them online at myhscu.com. Heritage South Credit Union, your community credit union for over 80 years. Federally insured by the NCUA. I'm <laughs> sorry. 
funeral service represents a family's final farewell to their loved ones. Knowing this, we go beyond what is expected to ensure the ceremony is beautiful and memorable, a truly fitting tribute to that special life. We invite you to visit us to meet our staff and tour our renovated facility complete with a new dining area and catering services. We've been serving the people of this area for over 40 years and we think that you'll be pleased to find that making lasting impressions remains our first priority. Curtis and Son Funeral Home, Sylacauga, Childersburg. CVZ Senior Center is buzzing with activities. Seniors ages 55 and up are invited to join in all the fun. Enjoy free activities like chair Zumba, sewing, quilting, ceramics, pickleball, games, and more. Our complete calendar of events can be found on our Facebook page and our website at silicaga.breckdesk.com. 
The Senior Center is located at 2 West 8th Street in Sylacauga and is open Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Come see us. Toyota of Sylacauga has you covered with exclusive VIP direct pricing. Enjoy incredible savings of up to $6,000 off the total suggested retail price on select Toyota models. Experience the thrill of driving a new or used Toyota car, truck, or SUV while keeping more money in your pocket. We don't have it on the lot. We'll find it for you. Drive home in style with VIP direct pricing at Toyota of Sylacauga with up to $6,000 in total savings. ToyotaofSylacauga.com or visit us Highway 280 in Sylacauga. Toyota of Sylacauga. We're worth the drive. Back in uh, Vincent, Alabama, as uh, both bands finish their award-winning performance. And uh, we we're about to get set to go with the second half. B.B. Comer with a 12 to six lead over the Vincent Yellow Jackets. And B.B. Comer with a late touchdown uh, throw and catch. And uh, almost had another one uh, after that as the first half came to an end. As B.B. Comer showing that they can throw the football a little bit more. Raylon Sims uh, with a touchdown throw uh, in the first half and almost had another one uh, as the first half came to a close. Weed and uh, Michael Kirksey. Kirksey had a touchdown, and Weed almost had another one as the first half came, came to a close. So B.B. Uh, Calmer with a 12-6 lead over the Vincent Yellow Jackets. And uh, first half for Vincent really belonged to their quarterback. And he had an excellent first half, especially running the football. Kaysen Fields, the senior, and uh, he led Vincent on their long touchdown drive. B.B. Comer had some good running uh, with uh, Tristan Garrett in the first half. And Raylon Sims had uh, several uh, good runs as well. Richard Weed with a couple of uh, catches or passes and Michael Kirksey with a touchdown catch. So that's where we stand at halftime, 12 to six. There's no score at the end of the first quarter. B.B. Comer gets out in the second quarter with a nice drive to go up six to nothing. The point after is missed. And Vincent comes back and ties it. And then B.B. Comer with a very late touchdown to take the lead 12 to six in the first half. So uh, we're almost set to go in the third quarter and B.B. Uh, Comer will get the football in the third quarter. I think I'm right on that. As uh, we get set to go, brought to you high school football every Friday night. Brought to you by District 33 State Representative Ben Robbins. And of course, District 33 encompasses Coosa and Talladega counties, most of Talladega County and all of Coosa County. And ben does a great job as our state representative in District 33. I told you about Donahue Physical Therapy. If your doctor prescribes physical therapy for you or a family member, hey, it's a no-brainer. It's Donahue Physical Therapy on West Fort Williams and Sylacauga. Bailey Heating and Air, uh, I highly recommend them to you for your cooling needs, and that's what you need right now is cool air. And uh, Bailey Heating and Air on Highway 2, not only do they do heating and air, they do electrical and plumbing work too. And they're on Highway 280, uh, close to Childersburg. That's Bailey Heating and Air. And Toyota of Sylacauga, uh, one of our wonderful sponsors of high school football. And they do a lot of community uh, goodwill. This Toyota of Sylacauga, uh, and we're glad that they're a part of our high school football coverage as well. Marvel City Pharmacy, Jared and Jacob, they're just good guys. And uh, of course they have a segment on Daybreak uh, the second Monday of the month. And uh, they come in and talk about different topics. And I just kind of hang in there with them because I just kind of open the mic and let them go. And uh, 
they're probably arguably the, the top pharmacy in town in Sylacauga, Marble City Pharmacy. Sylacauga Parks and Rec, man, <laughs> what can you say about Steve Masters and his gang over at Sylacauga Parks and Rec? They're getting in some new playground equipment over at Noble Park, and that should come in the next couple of weeks. And uh, they've got all kind of sporting events taking place at our parks and uh, soccer and all that kind of good stuff. That's uh, Sylacauga Parks and Rec. Omni, of course, uh, one of our great sponsors as well. We've talked about them earlier. Here at the South Federal Credit Union, always, 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 they're involved in communities. And they've got locations throughout the area. So uh, certainly here at the South Federal Credit Union, excited to be a part of uh, high school football coverage. Community Funeral Home, my buddy Charles Woods, Godero Woods at Community Funeral Home. Uh, Pre-need to at-need funeral services, funerals, bearers, or cremation. It's Community Funeral Home. Earlene's Flores, Don Convil, and the folks at Earlene's Flores for just about any gift idea. Uh, they've got floral arrangements for it, and the gift shop as well. Earlene's Flores on the Talladega Highway in Sylacauga. Bandit's Bar and Grill, they provide our uh, food every Friday night, and we've got probably 20 people uh, with our staffs of doing high school football games throughout the area that they feed every Friday night. And it's good, good barbecue. That's uh, Bandit's Bar and Grill. And uh, of course, Curtis and Son Funeral Home. Uh, since 1975, they have been uh, in our area with two locations in Sylacauga and in Childersburg. And I'm fortunate enough to work for Curtis and Son Funeral Home as one of the directors. and. We appreciate them uh, being a part of high school football as well. B.B. Coleman with a 12 to 6 lead at halftime. Rick Morris, my buddy uh, Rick Morris. And, uh, you know, Rick uh, is very involved in community activities. And he said, yeah, count me in for high school football. And we've got him on tonight. They're building a brand new warehouse down in East Alabama in Tallahassee. And that thing's going to be ready by December. Going to employ a lot of people as Vincent kicks off. To begin the third quarter, Jimison on the return for the Tigers. And B.B. Comer will have a first down as we go to work in the third quarter. The Tigers on top of the Yellow Jackets by a score of 12 to 6. We're talking about uh, Rick Morris. And, uh, you know, Rick originally from Sylacauga, graduate of Sylacauga High School. And uh, he's a Mill Village guy. And he's never forgotten his roots either. He, he knows where he came from. And uh, we're glad to have uh, Rick as partner with us with high school football tonight as well. So B.B. Comer with the first down in 10. Raylon Sims will take the snap and he'll pitch it to Weed. And Weed uh, trying to get the corner and he's pulled down at the 41-yard line. B.B. Comer wanted the horse collar but didn't get the call. It'll bring up second down. Pick up of about four. So second and six. And uh, up near the 40 yard line. BB Cone with two. Uh, with one late first half touchdown and almost another one as the first half came to an end. Weed was inside the five yard line. So second down and about six. Sims to throw it, and he's got a man open, and the first down, the receiver caught it and went down to the ground. That's Jacob Swain, and they'll move the chains. That's an early in his floor, his first down at the 48-yard line. B.B. Comer showing they can throw the football a little bit, and that's going to help better balance their offensive attack. So it was the first down for B.B. Comer at the 47-yard line. Sims hands to Garrett. Garrett breaks a couple of tackles, and he's up near another Tiger first down. Coming up limping a little bit is Landon Archer. It'll be second down and very short for B.B. Comer. 
Garrett broke a couple of tackles and he's up near the first down, second and very short. Just underway to the third quarter, B.B. Comer 12 and Vincent six. Catches made by Riley and Riley's got another first down for B.B. Comer inside the 35 yard line. Gary and Riley, a sophomore. And that's an early East Flores first down. They'll move the chains again at the 33-yard line. So Sims on a little hot streak throwing the football, too. He'll line up with Garrett in the backfield with him. Trips receiver to the top of the screen. They go with Sims and he stutter steps and tries to get on the corner. And he's pulled down from behind. Good stop by Jaden Roberts, the middle linebacker for the Yellow Jackets. Pick up of about four, second and six. For B.B. Comer leading 12 to six is they're trying to put a drive together here in the third quarter. Much, ba much better balanced attack by B.B. Comer offensively this week than last. Sims dancing away and he is going to be tackled. And he goes down in the grass of Jason Blackburn, the defensive end. Lost yardage on that play, so they'll bring up third down now and 10. We're early in the third quarter. B.B. Comer leading 12 to six at the 33 yard line. It'll be third down and basically 10 for the Tigers. Couple of scores. Uh, Childersburg leading Talladega in the first half, throwing down the field incomplete. He was trying to get the pass to Richard Weed and bring it fourth down. Childersburg uh, leading Talladega at halftime and uh, Sulacaga zero to zero with Montevala as a start in the third quarter. That's unusual. No score down at Legion Stadium in Sulacaga in the third quarter there. Fourth down and here is Sims gonna throw it again and it's too tall for the intended receiver off the hands of Jacob Swain, and Vincent will take over on downs. Penalty flag is down. Let's see what that is. Personal foul against Vincent. That'll give B.B. Comer a first down. Oh, wow. On the fourth down. Goodness. Penalties have uh, played a pivotal role in the flow of this game. So that'll move the chains 15 yards against Vincent. So uh, costly penalty for the Yellow Jackets. They would have taken over on downs, but uh, apparently roughing the passer. So it'll be first down for B.B. Comer. Sims pumps. Looking, throwing off his back foot, he just throws it uh, intended. And the penalty flag comes in late. And uh, I think Vincent gonna be called for interference as Jacob Swain was held on the play. Vincent's got a player down in the near the end zone too. But let's check that penalty. I think that's gonna go against Vincent. Like uh, one of the players from Vince is suffering uh, from cramps. 
And that's not unusual with the heat and humidity the way it is. So that's going to give B.B. Comer first and goal. At least I believe that's what it's going to be. We'll wait and see. Coach Fossage checking on the Vincent player, and he's a good one, Aiden Gassaway. But hopefully it's just a cramp in his leg. Officials are talking this over to make sure they get it exactly right. And we'll uh, await the mark off. Pass interference against Vincent. And that's going to make it first and goal for B.B. Comer. And this, uh, let's see where they're going to mark it about the nine yard line or so. Takes the officials a, a while, but they want to make sure they get it right. So it'll be first down and goal for B.B. Comer, leading 12 to 6, 7.49 to go in the third quarter. Raylon Sims. He has uh, Tristan Garrett behind him. And let's see if we're going to get this. Uh, <laughs> I think the official's not quite sure where the mark off should be to. And they're still discussing it. I think it's going to be first and goal, isn't it? First down and go. A stutter step and holding on to the football with both hands is Tristan Garrett. Whistle blow again. Now then they'll rewind the clock. <laughs> Maybe it's first down now. They just showed first down. And running into the end zone for the touchdown is Tristan Garrett. So remember that 15 yard personal foul penalty against Vincent on a fourth down play puts B.B. Comer in a good spot and they convert it as they lead it now 18 to six with Tristan Garrett from about 10 yards out. B.B. Comer will go for two here. Back in the days of you know, Coach Overton, he didn't believe in going for uh, extra point. He didn't have anybody could kick an extra point, so they always went for two. So they're going for two here. And he gets to run all the way and uh, trying to get diving. I don't know if he got there or not. I think Fisher well, got a penalty flag down. Maybe holding against B.B. Coleman. We've had a lot of flags here in the third quarter for sure. And here's the uh, and it is uh, legal procedure, legal motion against B.B. Coleman. So. Uh, They'll have to do the two-point conversion over again. Okay, the officials had a hard time <laughs> getting things orchestrated here in the third quarter. So now, 18 to six. The two-point conversion again. 
attempt it. Sims and Garrett, a little pitch to Garrett, and he has nowhere to go. So the two-point conversion fails with 7.27 to go in the third quarter. B.B. Comer increases her lead to 18-7. To you always wonder what ifs, and Vincent had stopped B.B. Comer apparently on a fourth down call, a fourth down play, but uh, personal foul penalty. Gives the Tigers a first and goal, and they put it in the end zone promptly for a touchdown. So it's 18 to 6 now. Big B. Comer with a two touchdown lead over the Vincent Yellow Jackets. A lot of people thought uh, that Vincent had an excellent chance of beating B.B. Comer, and still we're yet early in the third quarter, but B.B. Comer is playing much better this week than they played last week. That's not to take anything away from Wadley because they were an excellent 1A team. So B.B. Comer playing a top five 1A team last week, a top five 2A team this week. Picked up at about the 20 yard line. And uh, that's Lane Mims. Out over the 40 for Vincent. A good run back by uh, Mims, sophomore. And he's out across the 40 to the 43 yard line. So it'll be a first down for the Yellow Jackets. Trailing 18 to 6. As we're midway through the third quarter. Fields will set his offense. He throws it out in the flat. And uh, Lane Mims breaking some tackles. He's a tough little guy, and he's still running. And he is out near midfield. Good run after the catch by Lane Mims. Picked up seven on the play. Second down and about three. 18 to six, B.B. Comer with the lead. Fields and Roberts in the backfield now, and they give it to Roberts, and Roberts is hit and uh, got the first down, Erlene's Flores first down over midfield. And he's tackled by Michael Kirksey, helped out by uh, Logan Holland. So it'll be Erlene's Flores first down. And Vincent's got a player being hepped up. That is Jaden Roberts. And he looks like he may have a cramp as well. But yeah, it happens especially early in the season with almost every team. So first down for Vincent at the B.B. Comer 47-yard line. Yellow Jackets trail 18-6. Fields keeps it himself. Fields runs out of bounds up near the 44-yard line. And that was a quarterback keep all the way. And Ja'Cory Brown, along with Kirksey, get him out of bounds. The 44 picked up three. Second down and seven. Gassaway in at running back now. In trouble and breaks away from, and coming back again and finally getting him and he still gets loose. Man, what a great play by Fields. And B.B. Comer had him, he got away, 
and uh, finally get him down. <laughs> but Kirksey of B.B. Comer had him twice, and he got away. They'll bring up third down now. And uh, about 12. Throwing down the sideline and pretty good defensive play by B.B. Calmer that time. And that's uh, Harris, the eighth grader. If I've got that right, uh, I think I'm right on that. So to bring up fourth down now. Let's see if Benson will go ahead and punt. Line up to kick it away. Nice punt. Caught on the run by Weed, and Weed is tackled. Nice open field tackle by Aiden Gassaway, the senior for Vincent, but BB Colmer's got good field position with 5.42 to go in the third quarter, leading 18 to 6. And things are for B.B. Comer are looking a little bit better. They've got it at their own 41 yard line with an 18 to six lead. They've moved the football pretty well the last few series. Garrett has had a good night running the football as well as running and throwing with Sims. Throws it, caught, and slipping a tackle is Riggins, the junior, and uh, he's out to the 45-yard line. Pick up of about four. And we've got a heat timeout here. And while we've got just a minute, let me say uh, thank you to all of you for watching tonight. And uh, don't forget, we'll be with you next week. We'll be at Legion Stadium in Sylacauga. Next week, we've got B.B. Comer uh, in their first region game. And then the following week, we've got Sylacauga for the first time this year. And Sylacauga was tied with Montevallo 0-0 uh, in the third quarter. So We've got a lot of teams on the schedule for later in the year. B.B. Cone will play Glenwood next Friday night at Legion Stadium in Sylacauga. See Coach Fawcett talking to his team now. and They're uh, feeling much better about themselves tonight than they did last week. Coach Fawcett was not happy with how things transpired last week, especially in the second half. So it's 18 to six, B.B. Comer with the lead and the football. A little over five minutes to go in the third quarter. B.B. Comer's offensive line, brand new for this year. Their defensive line, brand new for this year. So it's a growing process for the Tigers. First down and 10. Nice run by Garrett again. Garrett's up near the first down at midfield. we will bring up third down and about a yard. On the tackle for Vincent is Chapman. So B.B. Comer, uh, Offensive line blocking pretty good tonight. Got a third and a yard. Sims keeps. He's got the first down. Waylon Sims with the Tiger first down. Early Flores. 
to convince his defensive lineman and say, hey, I was held on that play, and he's tugging in his jersey. It's Marcus Hall, who made a lot of tackles last week in the win over Winterboro. Grayson Gould, uh, linebacker, limps off the field with the cramp. So a first down and 10 for B.B. Comer. They go right back to the ground. And both hands on the football is Michael Kirksey. B.B. Comer just kind of leaning on Vincent, and Vincent got another player going to be limping off the field. And that is... Uh, no, he's going to stay in. He said, I'm not, I'm not going out. That's Alex Ware. So pick up of a couple on the play for B.B. Comer. Second down and eight. And B.B. Comer moved a little early then. And fair. Number 15 for B.B. Comer. Moved too early, that'll cost him five yards. And that's, uh, you know, a young player who didn't get much play in time last year at all. But he will grow. Amari Fair, sophomore. Here's Sims with a second and 12. Here's Kirksey. And he uh, gets back to the original line of scrimmage. And they bring up third and long. Kadarius Chapman on the tackle for Vincent. So third and 10 for the Tigers. We're getting late in the third quarter now. And every play taking time off the clock for Vincent. Sims will look to throw it. He loads up and fires, is caught, and spinning, got the first down and more. And breaking tackles, a nice run after the catch is Riley, the sophomore. That's the early floor's first down for the Tigers inside the 35 yard line down near the 30. So great run after the catch by Diarian Riley and another on the money throw from Raylon Sims. So another first down for B.B. Comer. Sims keeps. And Sims battling his way, still running, pulling players to the 20-yard line. Three Vincent players and two are slow getting up. And you can tell Vincent is winded. Another player cramping up. That is Phoenix Maxwell. He's going to limp off the field. Another early East Flores first down for B.B. Comer. They are wearing Vincent's defense out. Sims and Garrett in the backfield. And they're bleeding as much clock as they can. Throwing it, caught, and not much on that play is a nice tackle on Richard Weed. And out there making the stop is Grayson Gould again. He called his name a lot of times. Pick up of a yard, second and nine. We're getting late in the third quarter now. B.B. Comer on the march, leading 18 to six. And looks like Vincent jumped offside.
It may have been uh, Blackburn. Yeah. Five yard mark off. He's second down and four now. Everything seems to be going BB Comer's way right now. So second down and four. Only 45 seconds remain in the third quarter and they're winding the clock. This may be the final play of the third quarter. Sims away to Garrett and Garrett is hit and knocked down. Good tackle by the Yellow Jackets in. Grayson Gould on the stop. And that's going to uh, end the third quarter. Vincent has yet another player limping coming off the field, and that's McMillan as the third quarter comes to a close, and the third quarter was all B.B. Comer, leading by a score of 18 to seven. They're deep in Vincent territory as we begin uh, the fourth quarter, and B.B. Comer likes where they are right now as they lowering the colors here at Vincent Stadium, and always a tradition. Lowering of the colors tonight. and we hope whatever your family is doing we hope it's safe and you enjoy your Labor Day weekend and uh, keep our friends down in Tallapoosa County in your prayers they were hit by some turbulent weather on Thursday night a lot of damage in the Alexander City area and uh, so a lot of people got lake homes down there and of course Auburn playing football at Jordan Hare tomorrow and uh, that's kind of messed up things down there. I know that the Walmart was closed on Friday much of the day because they didn't have any power. And uh, so damaging winds, uh, maybe microburst as it was called, uh, went through the area late yesterday. So our thoughts and prayers are with our friends down in Tallapoosa County in the Alexander City area. So we begin the fourth quarter here. B.B. Comer in control, leading by a score of 18 to six. They're driving uh, inside the 15 yard line with uh, the Tigers with a touchdown in the third quarter. And Vince has been unable to slow down the offensive attack for B.B. Comer, especially here late in the second quarter and through the third quarter. And here are the Tigers again with a third down and manageable, uh, about third and three or so. So Vincent has got to make a stop here. You know, Vincent with that win last week, they had lost three in a row from last season into this season, and they broke that losing streak last week against Winterboro. But they got their hands full tonight with this B.B. Comer Tiger team hungry for their first win of the year. Not much there at all. So they'll bring up fourth down now. That play uh, didn't have much of a chance. Ethan McElrath. Defensive end, the senior, six foot, 215 pounder with a stop. So that brings up fourth down and about five for B.B. Comer. And B.B. Comer's got a player down. 
That is Caden Brown. Brown is cramping a little bit too, looks like. And for sure, and we hope that's what it is, but because Brown was hurt last week. Coach Fawcett is out because Brown's one of his key players. And hopefully it's just going to be a cramp. I think that's what it is. Yeah. yeah these, these kids, uh, <laughs> this heat, humidity, something else. The Tigers gathering their troops along the sideline. Leading 18 to six with a fourth down now at about five deep in Vincent territory. And they'd love to get a first down here or even a touchdown on this play. And wouldn't be surprised to see Sim with the run or throw situation here. With a fourth down. One of his favorite targets has been Michael Kirksey. Here's a fourth down play. Looking to throw it on the run. Got a man open, incomplete. And it looked like Kirksey had it and dropped it. And he may have cramped up himself a little bit. So good stop by Vincent. They'll get the football back. But B.B. Comer missed a golden opportunity there. So just underway in the fourth quarter. B.B. Comer 18 and Vincent 6. Vincent will take over on downs from about the 15 yard line. Jason Fields has gone all the way at quarterback, the senior. Jaden Roberts, who had a great game last week, he'll line up in the backfield with Fields. go and a little end around and uh, coming from behind to make the tackle B.B. Colmer and uh, ball carrier was Lane Mims and Mims was a little late getting over to take the handoff so they lose about seven yards on the play back now at about the eight yard line Second down now and long for Vincent. Quarterback going to keep it. No whistles blow. That may get big go against Vincent there. We'll see. Gets BB Comer. <laughs> My goodness. Out to about the 15 yard line. I think BB Comer was offside. Fields to throw it. Got time, throws caught. And good open field tackle by Riley. Receiver comes up limping, that's Robertson. Third down now and about four for the Yellow Jackets. Possession down here. Third and four. Getting outside, he got the first down. Nice run by Jaden Roberts. He'll move the chains. That's an early for his first down. That's a 28 yard, 27 yard line. 
So Vincent's got to make up some ground trading by two scores in the fourth quarter. Looking to throw and he's going to be sacked. That is uh, Holland with a sack. And helping out was Ja'Cory Brown, the sophomore. We'll bring up second down now and uh, like about 20. Fields rolling now to throw it. Got some time throwing and is caught down the sideline. He is going to take it to the house. That'll be a touchdown for the Vincent Yellow Jackets. Just what they needed. Touchdown to Landon Archer. And Vincent right back in it. 18 to 12 with 8.35 to go in the football game. And B.B. Colmer looked like that they had everything under control, but Vincent no, they break a big play with Fields to Archer for a long touchdown. So Vincent uh, trailing only by six now, 18 to 12 with 8.35 to go. And Vincent is going to try the extra point here. Critical extra point, too, because that will put them within a touchdown of taking the lead. Good snap, plays down, kick up, and the kick is good. So with 8.35 to go, B.B. Comer clinging to an 18-13 to lead, and Vincent is fired up on the sideline. And B.B. Comer just saw the air come out of their balloon because they had it and get beat on a deep throw. And so Vincent right back in it now, trailing only by five, 18 to 13. Coach Fawcett talking to his young team, making sure we got all the numbers. And he, uh, Coach Fawcett, know that this team is kind of fragile a little bit because they're very young. But they played very well. But they give up the big play, and Vincent's right back in the game now at 18 to 13. So the Yellow Jackets will kick off with a spring in their step. B.B. Comer's got to move the chains. That's a critical extra point from Daniel Campos. He'll kick off. He drills it down the field and is taken in by Weed. Weed is racing. Weed all the way up near midfield. Great run on the kickoff by Richard Weed. Tigers with excellent field position. And holding on to a five point lead with eight minutes and some change left in the football game. So the Tigers got to protect the football and they got to move the sticks. And it's up to senior quarterback Raylon Sims to lead them. Sims takes a snap and hands running room. First down and more to Tristan Garrett. Erlene Flores first down for the Tigers. Up to about the 35 yard line in Vincent territory. And they'll move the chains, it'll be a Tiger first down. Just inside the 35. B.B. Comer trying to answer Vincent. Vincent with a big touchdown moments ago. Sims again. 
to Garrett. Garrett dances for about three yards. Marcus Hall making the tackle for Benson. Several Yellow Jackets uh, helping out on the stop. Chapman, another one. Comer's got a player that's limping a little bit. That is Tyler Parrish. He's a freshman. Can't afford to lose anybody on that uh, front line. Parrish is a center. Low snap. And here goes Sims. Sims got about seven on the carry. And Sims is a little slow getting up then. And he's hurt. Hopefully that's not anything serious, but he took a pretty good shot then. We'll bring up third down now at about four or so. And we're getting uh, pretty late in the football game with seven minutes exactly remaining. B.B. Comer holding on to an 18 to 13 lead over the Vincent Yellow Jackets. Yeah, let's see about uh, Raylon Sims because he's played a well of a game for B.B. Comer. And he is uh, on his back. Now they're hepping him up. Hopefully it's just something minor. And he walks slowly to the sideline. So B.B. Comer will call on Max Fawcett, the sophomore, to lead this Tiger team now. Third down at about five. Crucial play here. Fawcett will have Garrett back there with him. Richard Weed split to the top of the screen. Riggins, the junior, to the bottom. Third down and five. Looking to throw, fires his tip incomplete. Bring up fourth down. So they're gonna bring Sims back in with a fourth down now. It's a big play here. The fourth down and five. And if Vincent holds, they're going to get the football back with plenty of time on the clock. Let's see what happens here. Sims was injured uh, last play or so, but he's back in there and he keeps it himself. Trying to get outside, and he does, and he's got the first down. Sims with a great run. He's inside the 25-yard line, and Coach Weatherford is distraught with his players. And we got a heat timeout here, but B.B. Comer's got a first down. Erlene's Flores first down. And that was a huge run by Raylon Sims. And uh, we've got a player down near the Vincent sideline. We've had a lot of players down tonight. Everybody down on a knee, because everybody is tired. And hopefully this is not anything serious, but it may be. I can't tell if this is a BB Comer player or a Vincent player. We got a stoppage in play, and when we come back, BB Comer will have a first down. Mm, this may be uh, a little more difficult here. As both coaching staffs are kneeling on the sideline. Coach Fotchett with a smile on his face. So. Hopefully it's not too bad, whoever it is. We'll be able to tell momentarily, but B.B. Uh, Comer with an 18 to 13 lead and just picked up first down with Raylon Sims 
on the fourth down play. And uh, taking a while on this one. And while we've got just a minute, let me uh, mention our sponsors again. Uh, we couldn't do the games without our sponsors. And it's a B.B. Comer playing his Sims, looks like. Well, Sims has played a great football game tonight. And apparently is hurt on that last run. And he is walking slowly toward the B.B. Comer sideline on the far side of the field. So uh, it would be a big blow for Sims to be out any length of time. They go back to the sophomore, Max Fawcett. Max hadn't had a lot of playing time, but he is uh, the one who will be calling and getting B.B. Comer set for the next play as Sims continues to limp to the sideline. And still hopefully it's not anything really serious. You never know. Reminded of a young man who died on the football field last Friday night in a private school game. It was uh, Morgan Academy, I think it was. And uh, just tragic. And so you, you know, you never want to see that. You never want to see any serious injuries, much less a death. But that's what happened last week. So here we go with the first down and 10 for B.B. Coleman. Nice hole and running room for uh, Tristan Garrett. And B.B. Comer just wants to run that clock. They pick up six on the play. Second down and about, call it five, second and five. B.B. Comer, you can't say enough about this offensive line. They've done a great job after not doing a whole lot last week back again to Garrett. Garrett keeps his feet churning. And uh, now then we've got the heat timeout, I think. Yeah. And you know, one thing about this game, you see opposing players helping each other up. And that's great sportsmanship. 5.51 to go in the football game, but it's a very competitive game of course but these kids are uh, you know if one on a, the other team gets hurt they're hepping them up and uh, that's always good to see B.B. Comer with an 18 to 13 lead as we've got our final heat timeout how would you like to be the tiger dressed up there in that outfit as hot as it is tonight I'd be holding my head too <laughs> that's the marching sound of goal and used to call him uh, we used to call the Tiger BB Cone a long time ago. But anyway, the Tiger's in the stands and uh, having a good time. The Tiger's BB Cone lead this one. But it is precarious with an 18 to 13 lead. They're in Vincent territory at about the 18 yard line. Kirksey lining up back there with Fawcett. Fawcett takes a snap, throws it, and is caught. And Weed breaks one tackle. He's running laterally. He's not going to make a lot. And he's hammered out of bounds. And B.B. Coleman wants a flag, and they get it. That's going to be a first down as a late hit on the sideline. So that'll be... Uh, major penalty against Vincent. I'll give B.B. Comer a first down. Personal foul. It's usually 15 yards. So it'll give the Tigers a first down and that'll give them a fresh set of downs and one more clock. They just gotta run some clock now and keep the chains moving. Ronaldo Riggins reports into the game for B.B. Comer. So it'll 
be first down for B.B. Calmer, and that may be a first and goal. I think it is, yeah. The Tigers in great shape here. Can't pop the football up and give it to uh, Michael Kirksey, the senior, who cradles the football with both hands. And the clock continues to move. Second down and goal. The Tigers are going to run as much clock as they can before they snap the football again. Got to protect the football here. You don't want to turn it over. Leading 18 to 13, getting late in the game. Good snap, hand off to Kirksey. Kirksey is uh, around the five yard line, maybe. Player down. Vincent, now he's getting up. There's uh, Kate Carroll. So third down and goal. And headed to the end zone, didn't make it. Great tackle from behind by the Yellow Jackets by uh, Grayson Gould. That's gonna bring up fourth down. It looked like that Garrett was headed to the end zone, but Gould made a great tackle from behind. That brings up fourth down. And Vincent gets a timeout. Here we go with a big play here on fourth down. We're getting to uh, the do's and don'ts. With 3.57, just under four minutes remaining in the game, B.B. Comer clean to an 18 to 13 lead. And they've got to get a touchdown here. No question about it. And Vincent says, hey, we got to stop you. So let's see what happens here on fourth down. If B.B. Comer can score, then that'll just about cement the win. But if Vincent holds them here, uh, And they get the football back and got time on the clock. In Chilicaga tonight, Chilicaga's leading Vincent, uh, leading uh, Montevallo nine to seven, with 7:20 remaining in that football game. So that's a tight one down in Chilicaga to do to dine as well. So here we go, fourth down for BB Comer. Goal to go. Vincent says, "Hey, get up, fans! We got to stop." B.B. Comer here, and the Tigers said, we're going in. Tristan Garrett with Max Fossett. And it goes to Garrett, and whistles blow. And that's a flag against B.B. Comer, I think. Oh, wow. Five-yard mark off against the Tigers. And they may have to throw the football now. Just inside the 10-yard line, about the nine. Here we go, fourth down. Big play for Max Fawcett, low snout. Fawcett looks, throws the jump ball, and it's incomplete. Vincent takes over on downs. So the Yellow Jackets hold, and they get the football back with plenty of time remaining. 3.52, trailing 18 to 13. BB Comer's had some golden opportunities slip through their hands, and uh, defense of Vincent Rises up and makes another stop. So they've got the football back. So here come the Yellow Jackets to the line of scrimmage. Jason Fields back there with Gassaway. 
Fields rolling to throw. Pumps. And he is going to be pushed out of bounds. And penalty flag is down. I don't know what that is. Surely that's not a good BB call on that. Looks like he's just pushing him out of bounds. Let's see. Oh, wow. 15-yard mark off. And they whistled uh, Harris, the eighth grader, I think, on that play, but I don't know. So that'll bring it all the way out across the 20-yard line to about the 22 or so. So give Vincent some breathing room for sure. First down for the Yellow Jackets. Inside handoff and up to the 28 yard line is Aiden Gassaway with the carry. Plenty of time on the clock. About five. Throwing. Man is open. First down and more across the 40. And it'll be a first down for Vincent. BB Coleman's got another player cramping up. And they're going to have to stop the clock and help get him off the field. And Vincent is fired up. That's uh, Michael Kirksey. Tiger player with the cramp. And uh, you can feel the momentum shift. 315 to go. Vincent trailing 18 to 13, but uh e. Comer hurt themselves with that unsportsmanlike conduct, personal foul penalty. And uh, I didn't see it, but I'm not saying it didn't happen. The ball's marked at the 40-yard line. The events at first down when we go back to work. We've had many, many players with cramping issues tonight. Kirksey is hepped up. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's how cramps work. You don't look good getting off the field, but you got to do it. <laughs> Kirksey's a key player. You don't want him out long. Trying to run that thing out, work it out. He's not off the field yet. So first down for Vincent at their 40-yard line, trailing only 18 to 13. We're getting down to the nitty-gritty here in this one, and Vincent's feeling their oats a little bit now. Just a few moments ago, B.B. Comer looked like they had it under control, but not so much. Running room. Roberts. Roberts picks up about five. Second down. Clock continuing to move. The Tigers need to stop here. Quarterback keeps all the way. And he's got some room. He bulls his way over midfield and a first down. Uh, uh, there he goes. That's another penalty against B.B. Comer, probably. That was just uh, one of those plays that you, know, you got to keep you cool. B.B. Comer kind of lost theirs a minute. That may be Harris again. Unless they 
Falling on both players, but don't see that a lot. Personal foul against B.B. Calmer, yeah. You see that happen. You can't put your hand in his face mask. Now that's going to mark it off even further. B.B. Calmer is kind of coming apart here. Now the ball's down at the 33 yard line. That's two major distance penalties on this drive against B.B. Comer for personal fouls. Nice run by Fields, too. For Vincent trying to get on the scoreboard again. Hand off. Pretty big hole right there inside the 30 yard line to about the 28. Goes running back Jaden Roberts. Suck it down. At the 29 yard line. Benson is on the march. Rolling the throw, getting some pressure. Now he flips it and he's batted down. Nice defensive play by Ja'Cory Brown. Minute 34 left to go in the game. B.B. Comer leading 18 to 13. Third down now for Vincent. Obviously in two down territory, clock stops on the incompletion. 18 to 13, B.B. Comer holding to the lead. Jason Fields has played an outstanding game at quarterback for the Yellow Jackets. He'll take the snap, and B.B. Comer may have jumped offside. B.B. Comer says it against Vincent, let's see. Everybody point. <laughs> Vincent says it gets B.B. Comer. And it is. Oh, wow. Five yard penalty. My goodness. B.B. Comer is penalized much here in the second half. The third down now in a yard. Fields keeps it himself. He's got the first down. Fields still running. He is tripped up. And let's see if he got the first down. B.B. Comer says he's down. A penalty flag is down. Let's see who this one's against. No matter who it's against, it's a, it's a critical penalty. Vincent says it's against them. We'll see. They're waving the flag off. <laughs> what are they doing now? That's marking the football at the 14 yard line or so, 15 yard line. Fawcett wants an explanation for sure, but he's not getting it. Minute 25 to go, and we've had penalty flags fly, and then that one, for whatever reason, was uh, waved off. So timeout now with a minute 25 to go in the game, and Coach Fawcett is trying to get an explanation. He is not a happy camper. Explanation from the referee. He's not real happy, but he's kind of laughing about it. Jimmy Comer has seen penalties. Wow, really hurt. Him. I mean, the 
they have seen many penalties here, especially uh, late in the third quarter and fourth quarter. They're going to have to make a stop. Because Vincent is feeling like that they're going to put this one in. So we'll see. First down and 10 for the Yellow Jackets. And they're at about the 15 yard line. Jason Fields with uh, Roberts back there with him. Fields keeps it. He is running inside the 10 yard line. He just lowered his shoulder. And Vinson is really, you know, we got whistles and uh, we got a timeout or what? bit earlier, Vincent was dragging. They really were. And now it's B.B. Coleman that is back on their heels. Coach Fawcett and his staff doing everything they can to get the Tigers back focused. And uh, they don't have to make a stop here or they're going to lose their second game in a row. And it'll be their third loss in a row because they lost the last game of the season in the playoffs last year. So. Sixty four seconds is all remained in the game. The ball's at the, uh, at the 10 yard line. All right. Scoreboard says 20. Coach uh, Rutherford is talking to the referee. We've got a minute seven on the clock now. A lot of confusion going on right now. Eighteen to thirteen. BB Calmer trying to hang on to the lead. Vincent knocking on the door. We're about the eight-yard line. Under a minute remaining, the clock still running. Now they change. Uh, now and then they. BB Palmer wants to call a timeout, I think. <laughs> With 38 seconds to go. Coach Fawcett and his staff getting his young team over and trying to get them to make sure that they focus on this place. So third down play. And penalties have just wrecked B.B. Palmer here in the second half. Palmer trying to hang on to an 18-13 lead or fall to 0-2 on the season. It looked like you know, late in the third quarter, B.B. Palmer had it in hand, leading 18-6, and looked like they're going in for another score. Didn't make it, and Vincent with a big touchdown throw and catch and it's 18 to 13 and all of a sudden Vincent right back in it knocking on the door to take the lead and the win. Fields rolling and whistles blow again. <laughs> Just have to chuckle every once in a while. I 
against Vincent, five yard mark off. 38 seconds to go. Third down for the Yellow Jackets. Fields has played an excellent game tonight. He's rolling to look. Looking, looking, now throwing, and it is incomplete. Oh, he caught it. Wow. And a penalty flag is thrown in. I think Vincent takes the lead. I hadn't seen the signal for a touchdown. But that's not unusual. I don't know what this one might be. I don't even hazard a guess. or something after the touchdown. The only thing I can figure, but I've been wrong so many times. Unsportsmanlike conduct against Vincent. I think that's, uh, yeah. The touchdown is on the board. And if Vincent's gonna take the lead, the penalty will be on the kickoff with only 34 seconds to go in the game. 19 to 18, Vincent. And who would have thought it? But Vincent got up from the ground and really, with the help of penalties, they've taken a 19 to 18 lead. Vincent calls a timeout. Now, B.B. Colmer will have that 15 yard penalty uh, assessed against Vincent on the kickoff, so they should get good field position. I don't think they have a field goal kicker that they really rely on, so they're gonna have to probably get a touchdown. Just coaching staff of BB Corner just cannot believe what has transpired. So Vincent with a 19 to 18 lead. And I'm assuming the penalty will be Marked off on the kickoff, and they'll go for two points here. They're trying to get it to 21 to 18. And they have Gassaway to take the snap. Only 34 seconds remain. Gassaway takes it, and he just steps into the end zone, and it's 21 to 18. So B.B. Comer has their backs squarely to the wall, against the wall as all of a sudden, Vincent has come from nowhere to take the lead 21 to 18. And the penalty will be marked off on the kickoff, so B.B. Comer will get it with uh, only 34 seconds left to go in the game. So Coach Weatherford telling his team, hey, look, just don't make foolish mistakes. B.B. Comer, Coach Fawcett is saying, hey, we've got to get the football down the field. And I don't know if uh, Raylon Sims is able to go back in the game. Should B.B. Comer get it in pretty good field position and try to throw it deep? Or will it be Max Fawcett, the young sophomore? So the kickoff's gonna be from the 25 yard line. So the Tigers of B.B. Comer should get good field position, but they don't have much time to get it in the end zone. Campos to kick off for Vincent. Whistles blow again on the kickoff. And 
let's see what this one is. And that may be against Vincent. I'm not sure, but we'll see. She doesn't want to kick it again for some reason. <laughs> now they move it back to the 20. Hmm. Strange happenings. So Campos will kick it from his own 20. Picks it up, and he is trying to get to the sideline and is out over the 45-yard line. So there's a, another penalty flag down, I think. Maybe it's not. So, let's see where it is now. Talking about something at the 40 yard line. And they'll spot it at the 43 now. And they're still talking. They do have Sims, BB Palmer does, back in the game, but they got a long way to go and a short time to get there. Reminds me of the song. A lot of laundry against the Tigers here in the second half. Sims has been battered and bruised, and he's back there quarterback. He throws, got a man open, and uh, that's Riley. And Riley is all the way down to the 40-yard line. Or thereabouts, let's see where they spot it. Seven yard line, and they stop the clock now. Not much time left, only 19 seconds. So BB Comer is going to have to uh, get in the end zone quickly. With only 19 ticks on the clock left. BB Comer in a precarious situation. that they had the game well in hand, but uh, not so. Give credit to Vincent. They fought their way back in it. But we still got some time left. Sims looking, throwing, and it's out of bounds. Incomplete. Sims looks like he's favoring his right leg a little bit as he... Uh, throws the football and only 15 seconds now to go. They've got to get further down the field and get out of bounds. Or it's going to be over. He Palmer sends uh, Kirksey to the top of the screen. They'd like to get the football in his hands if he can. Looking to throw it and in trouble and I don't know if they're going to call out a fumble or an incomplete pass, but uh, let's wait and see. I don't know what they're going to call. Incomplete pass, I guess. BB Comer calls a timeout. And uh, only one more play left, probably. They're going to have to go in the end zone what appeared to be a B.B. Calmer breakthrough victory. Now it appears to be a very, very bitter, bitter loss unless they can get the football in the end zone. Now the officials are talking once again and they 
want uh, a grounding call, probably, but I don't know if they're going to get it or not. The officials are talking about it. But, uh, it's been a strange, strange second half for sure. Now the officials got their notebooks out. That's usually not a good sign. So here we go. Fourth down. You gotta, you gotta take it in the end zone or this will be the final play. You got a strong arm quarterback in Sims who's thrown it in the end zone. And here we go now, fourth down. And he throws for it all and it is intercepted. And the Vincent Yellow Jackets are winners of this game. And the interception is Phoenix Maxwell and Vincent with a come from behind stunning defeat of the B.B. Comer Tigers, 21 to 18. And B.B. Comer cannot believe it, but it is so. As Benson goes to 2 and 0 on the season, B.B. Comer falls to 0 and 2 on the year. Your final, Benson 21, B.B. Comer 18. That's our matchup from uh, Vincent, Alabama tonight as uh, Vincent comes back from what appeared to be a loss, but they didn't give up and hand it to them. They come back and win this one by a score of 21 to 18. Vincent improves to 2-0, and B.B. Comer falls to 0 and 2. We'll be back with you next week. Legion Stadium in Silicago, first region game of the year for B.B. Coleman. Sarah Automotive High School Game of the Week. Tonight, Vincent, Alabama, your final again. Vincent 21 and B.B. Coleman 18. Hope you have a wonderful Labor Day weekend. Stay safe. Until next time, God bless you. God bless America. Have a great weekend. Bandit's Bar and Grill is your stop for great food, family fun, and live music. Wednesday night, it's Cornhole Tournament. Thursday night, Biker Night. Don't forget about the live music too. Great steaks, full bar, awesome appetizers, wings, nachos, tacos, and fried catfish. Stop in today or give us a call at 256-369-2920. That's Bandit's Bar and Grill on Fort Williams in Sylacauga.